We're on the classes page going over the spacing section. Spacing is one of the recommended global class systems inside Client First. This class system is going to do two things for you. Number one, it's going to help you stay unified in your spacing throughout the project. This is going to make your website look more neat and organized naturally. If you have all different types of spacing on desktop and tablet and mobile and everything is all different, it will look messy. We want to have a unified spacing look throughout every page, every section in our build. And number two, it's going to help you build a lot faster. A lot of times you will have to create a custom class just for spacing an element from another element. And we don't want that. We want to create custom classes, but meaningful custom classes, custom classes that we need to create. So we have a spacing system. This will help you do a lot of things. And if you are part, if you were part of our closed beta, we have some big changes to spacing. This is a highly simplified system. It has significantly less classes, and we are now finding that it's easier and faster for us to build in Webflow. We used to have a few hundred spacing classes. We've reduced that to 36 classes that come with the client first clonable. Let's get into it. First, the biggest change, we have two different types of classes that manage spacing. We have direction classes and we have size classes. Direction classes tell CSS which direction you want the margin or padding to go on. So we have margin top, bottom, left, right, horizontal, and vertical. And then on top of the direction class, we put a size class. Margin zero, tiny, extra, extra small, small, large, huge, and so on. So if I wanted a margin bottom large, I would apply the margin bottom class. And then on top of that class, we have margin large. Great. So that sounds great, but we need to go and see it in action. Of course, I'm going to go and open this up and show you it live. Let's look at this structure here. We have text, text, text. Three different types of text, three different spacings between the text. So if I go to the parent of this text, you'll see margin bottom, margin small. We have margin bottom, margin medium. And then here we have margin bottom, margin extra, extra large. So if I wanted to update my margin bottom margin medium class, I can go and remove that and I'll be returned with a whole list of margins that I can use for my margin bottom. And that list is a bit smaller on this example site, but it will have a full list of all of these margin options. So you know what you can put as a margin so that it's unified inside your spacing system. We're using the four point system inside client first, and that's exactly what we're following here. So I can go click on this and say, you know what? I want margin large. Great. Or actually I want margin small. Great. So it's really nice to be able to apply the direction and the size rather than one single class that is for direction size and even responsive level. We have a special rule for responsive. We'll get to that after. Okay. So how does this work? Let's get a little bit into the CSS structure of this. How does this work? How do we apply the direction and then the class on top? I'm going to show you this, but if you don't understand it, do not worry. You actually don't need to understand this concept to use the system day to day inside your client work. You can see that we have zeros all around and then we have the value that we want in the direction that we want. And that goes for all of these. We have zeros, 
and then we have the value in the direction that we want. So let's look at this. If I were to apply margin bottom, it's going to apply zeros all around except for the direction that's specified in the class name. Zero left, zero top, zero right, nothing on the bottom. And you guessed it, if I did a margin top, spelled correctly, spelled correctly again, it's going to have zero, 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 and nothing. And then when I, before we do that, hold on, let's now do a margin large. It's going to apply these values to every direction. We would never use the margin large alone, or we probably don't need to use the margin large alone, but when we apply it to the direction, it's going to apply this to the direction, and the zeros are going to cancel out the directions that we do not want. So we have margin top, and I can apply the margin large, and it's going to apply that three rem only to the top because the other directions are canceled out by the zeros. So that's how it works. Again, you do not need to understand this. And if you don't, you will after using it just a few times. We have beginners using this system flawlessly. So that's how it works. We're zeroing everything out except for the direction we want. Apply the size. That gives it the size to that direction. Awesome. Now, margin large is going to change the same for every single responsive level. So if I go to margin large, we have 3 rem on desktop, 2.5 on tablet, and 1.5 on both mobiles. And you can see all of these will change. We have 2, 1.5, 1.25. We have 12, 8, 4.5, 4.5. For most spacing throughout your build, you want to keep these default spacings. That's really the point of this, that whether you have margin top or bottom or left or right, we're going to maintain the same sizes across all responsive levels. However, this doesn't always work exactly as planned. No problem. So we are going to, we'll get to padding in a second. We're going to apply a combo class on top of our two spacing classes specifically for this instance. Maybe we create is tablet small and every time we have a margin extra large, we have the option to do tablet small or maybe mobile zero, or maybe it's something totally custom that we need some special custom class for the home contact mobile. Great. So let's look at how we may be able to do that. We could have our margin bottom, margin extra, extra large. And if I were to look at my available combo classes, I could say is mobile tiny. So is mobile tiny, is going to apply a 0.5 rem. And this is up to you. This is a class that you can make. You may be able to do your entire build without a single custom combo class for your spacing. Probably not going to happen. You probably will need to do it. And anytime you need to do it, you could say, let's say is a custom home if this makes sense for your build, if this is enough context for the reader, then this makes sense. So is custom home is going to do this, and then it's going to do this. Why not? So we have our default for desktop, and then something crazy is happening here. And maybe this crazy thing happens elsewhere throughout the build. So anytime we have a margin small, we can go and apply that combo class to make that customization. Great, so we have our direction, we have our size, it changes default for tablet and mobile, and when we need a further customization, we apply a combo class. Excellent. 
we went right pla- we went right past padding here because padding is the exact equivalent as margin just with padding so when we have the padding top it's going to apply zeros to every padding except for the top and then for size it's going to apply the padding to all directions same exact concept and just to prove it to you i will do that right now so we can even just do the same thing here we'll do padding bottom same deal and then padding medium great it's exactly what we're looking for so the margin and padding work exactly the same you can use this for these parts of a section you can use this for spacing elements from one another and i'm going to show you how we would use this in a real build let's go and change this back to the margin i think we had bottom and something tells me it was a small that looks right cool let's open this up and let's look at how we are structuring this these classes these elements how they're nested we are going to nest things inside of our spacing wrappers that's what we're calling these spacing wrappers we have the margin bottom margin small we have the margin bottom margin medium and we have the margin bottom margin xx large and you can see that there's text inside each one of these so I don't need to create any custom classes here. I don't need to have home about big text, home about spacing bottom, home about something else. We don't want to be creating custom classes for our typography and our spacing because it gets messy and it gets confusing. So we have this beautifully custom looking section with te different text, different spacing, and all of it is following this really nice global system. We have this as the wrapper, text inside. This is going to be followed throughout the build. Look at this hero section. If I click on my text and I go one level up, we have our margin bottom, margin small, separating it from this heading one. And if I open this up, we have our margin top, margin small, margin top, margin medium. So I can go and create this entire content section, and I haven't even created a custom class. I haven't made my build more difficult to understand. I can read these classes and understand what they are responsible for. I can, yeah, read these classes and understand what they're responsible for. That's the point of client first. I think that's it for spacing. That is a pretty good overview of how this spacing works. Now, if you're confused, do not worry, please. We are going to continue going over this in terms of going over our clonables, going over our resources, our wireframes, our templates. Go to the resources section and start cloning this. You can actually see all of this spacing work live in action. This is a quick overview but really using it and seeing it inside projects is how you're going to understand it and you'll understand it quick. Also, please check out this learn more button. There is even further explanation, some screenshots explaining how this is supposed to work. One more thing I forgot as I open this up, do not use spacing globals like this. Okay. Um, yep right here. Okay, let's go over that. So you may be saying, well, why don't we just apply? Why don't we just apply the margin class to this? Right? So we have this margin bottom margin XX large, it's separating this from this. So why don't we just stack it right on here? Well, we could do this. If I can click through on here, we could go, let's say margin bottom, and we have margin XX large, and that will create the space. We can use these margin classes literally anywhere. They can be stacked, they can be on their own, they're totally global in the system. We don't want this because we don't want to overstack in client first. 
This is a core, core principle of client first. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go to the mindset and give a good read through that long form content. It's going to explain in full the dangers of overstacking inside Webflow. And this is considered overstacking. Because if I want to get to this home about content right, if I'm a client and I want to edit this, guess what I'm going to do? This. And we do not want to create a new combo class from these, these global add-ons. This is really dangerous. So that's why we have so many layers and that's why we break things up to prevent things like this. We want to keep our custom classes clean, ready to work with. If I want to edit this, I want to edit it fast and I don't want to create any new combos. If I want to make a change to my margin fast, I want to make it fast without any problem with combos. So please keep that in mind. That's why we are keeping these as separate layers. That's why they're used as wrappers and they are not just being stacked and stacked and stacked on top of customs. Cool. All right. Now we're done with spacing. Please continue learning this. This is an awesome method. We have our whole team using this and loving it.